All right, pre-calc, we are going to deal with some exponential functions. Uh, they are inverses of log functions, and we're going to work on that throughout this chapter. Uh, why do we deal with these? Uh, it's part of the, uh, you know, we have two of them for the uh, 12 of the family of functions we work with. Uh, that's number one. They are inverses of each other, like we had mentioned. Uh, so, of course, if we're going to get into log functions in this chapter, we're going to start with exponential functions. All right, so first blank you have there, exponential, it's when we have uh, where a is a non-zero. Okay, so typically we're used to a, b to the x power. Okay, where a is a non-zero number, b is positive. b is not one, because one to any power stays one, so that would make it linear. Uh, and a is called the initial value. And b is, of course, the base, not a trick here at all. So what we want to know is out of these, uh, which ones are exponential functions? Okay, so just because it has an exponent doesn't mean it is. So over here, I have the graph of all of them, and it looks like a mess, uh, but we're just going to go through each one. X to the fifth power here in the red, uh, that's definitely not going to be exponential. A couple of reasons. Uh, take a look at the graph. Um, you know, it kind of looks like X to the third power. It just has uh, kind of a flattened out part in the middle. Uh, so it's definitely not, right? It's, it's an adaptation to the cube function, uh, so we're not going to deal with that at all. Uh, the blue one, okay, so those of you through Algebra 2 right here, right, so that looks pretty good as far as what we're looking for in an exponential. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is get an idea of what it looks like. That's number one. Uh, the next thing is I can identify the base as 2. I can identify A as 3. And I also want to point out while we're just jumping into this is take a look at what happens at 3 for this blue graph. Okay, notice that a value is going to give you the y-intercept. So those are some things we tried to point out in Algebra 2 as we deal with these. So that one's good. What am I going to do? I'm going to mark those. All right, so that's a good one. <clears throat> what about the green one? Okay, does that look like exponential growth or decay? Uh, that just looks really weird, right? Uh, the base, we don't know. And if we say that the base is a variable x and we could put anything in there, then we could possibly have 1 in there. So that's kind of a mess because that was one of the rules. We can't have that. Uh, so we're going to say no to that one. Uh, now we're up to this purple one, which is down here below. All right, and let's take a look here. We have uh, 1 half, all right? So I can say b is 1 half. Uh, we have an a value of negative 3. Let's see, what do we say about those a values? Uh, Non-zero number, okay, so that would be okay. All right, so this one looks like it's in pretty good shape. Now notice what's going on with it. Uh, normally you're like, eh, it looks a little bit weird. Uh, it doesn't exactly look like exponential growth or decay, but remember we have this a value is negative. Uh, so we're going to talk about those translations as well here today. And that means we're going to flip the whole thing over the x-axis. So uh, it has a reflection, right? If I flipped it over, it would kind of look like one of the other ones. Right, and then the one we have here listed in black, this is 3 to the negative x power. All right, let's translate that first, not with a highlighter, you big dummy. All right, so here we go. This is one third to the x power. Okay, so we could say the a value is one. All right, probably a good time to point that out. Uh, that means it's going to go through one. Hey, there it is. All right, uh, we have b is one third, which gives us the fact that it's going from left to right, it's headed down. Okay, so that's just taking a look at the graphs. Uh, so we said no to this one, we said yes to this one, we said no to that one. Uh, we said yes to this one, and we said yes to this one, right, but we can identify A is 3 and B is 2. A is negative 3, B is 1 half. A was 1 because there's nothing there. In this case, that nothing is 1, and B happens to be 1 third after we do a little translation with that negative x power. All right, so the couple that we have to take a look at... Um, well, this, uh, this one here is a little bit weird because we had, we got flipped over. So I don't want to talk about those too much. All right, so here's what we have. If the B value is greater than one, right? If we're talking about something being greater than, guess what? It's a growth. All right, and if we're talking about the B value being less than one, that's a decay. Okay, so you're going to use these in uh, science class. We're going to talk about them here in the next couple of days, uh, talking about... Um, uh, Half-life, uh, talking about things that are really old that have been around for a long, like when they find fossils and stuff like that. They talk about the half-life uh, based on the area it was found in, the condition that it's in, to figure out how old it is, even though we don't know, right? 
All right, so here's what we're looking at. Um, so I tried to drop a lot of the things here uh, for my students. If you're watching this um, from somewhere else, I don't know how to help you with that. Uh, but uh, I have the Desmos dropped in here. It's a shameless plug for them. Fantastic uh, program here. So if you have your graphing calculator, by all means, please use that. You can do that uh, on any standardized test. You're allowed to do those things. Uh, but we know that if B is two, three, four, or five, these are all growths. So that's what I have on this graph over here. And you see all of those things highlighted. And you see how left to right, they're going to go up, right? Uh, we're not going to cross over that X axis. And we do have a shared point here, if I can zoom in a little bit more. And notice they all go through one. Why? What's the A value? One for all of them. It's shameless. They do a good job with it, OK? Uh, but it looks pretty good. So what we can do is, which point is common for all of them? Oh, well, that's 0, 1. And analyze the functions for domain range. Uh, are they continuous, increasing, decreasing behavior? All right. So all the things we've talked about this year, uh, we can take a look at and list all that information. So we know domain left to right forever is all reals. All right, so this goes back to that being what part of the family is it? Um, the range, since these are going to be above, whoop, they're going to be above. So they are 0, not inclusive until infinity because they just keep rising, right? They're growth. That's what they do. So you can imagine when I click on the other ones, let me make sure this works here. All right, let's take out all the growth ones and give you a chance to look at the decay. Kind of nice how this works right inside of this. If it's not, if it's not large enough, uh, this can all be resized. It's a little finicky because it's in a box in a box. So if you can get to this point, then we can grow those. And then from there, it works just like the website. All right, so again, the A value is positive one for all these. But notice left to right, they're going down, down, down. All right, so our domain is still going to be all real numbers. Uh, our range is still going to be 0 up to positive infinity because the left-hand side is going up there. Uh, they're all continuous. There's nothing we can put in there. Um, they are con completely decreasing for this one. So decay, decreasing, we get all those ideas. Uh, and just taking a look at symmetry. And we don't have any symmetry going on here. Um, end behavior, we're going to talk about that. All right, so great opportunity to talk about uh, limit ideas. So if we talk about our first function, and we have this one over here, uh, we'll describe the end behavior. So let's go ahead and get that graph back up here. And since I'm trying to picture something, then we can just click on it here. All right, so that was a growth. All right, so end behavior. So as we go to the left, we're approaching what number? So for this function, as we approach negative infinity, uh, we're going to end up where x is approaching y is approaching uh, 0. Okay, We're going to get closer and closer to 0. Uh, for our other one, on the other side, as we go to positive infinity, we're going to be approaching infinity. Now, if we look at the decay, right, so as we look at the left, right, we're going to approach infinity. And as we look at the right, we're going to approach zero. Right, so that was this one, one third. OK, so completely flip flopped. So we just want to have some of those ideas. All right, so over here, if you scroll over far enough, all right, we do have some similarities here. Um, domain, all reals, range, uh, zero to infinity, doesn't matter if it's growth or decay. They are continuous. They are not uh, symmetric, even or odd. Uh, they are bounded below, but not above, right? So we had a lot of these things we talked about previously. And we can start to ask these questions and answer them again. And so as x approaches, so we talk about left to right and what's going to happen with our functions. Okay, So we approach infinity when it's going up and 0 because we won't cross over that value. So that's my first Desmos that I had in here. Uh, the next one, what we're going to do is focus on this one. We're talking about transformations. Remember, everything inside these parentheses was backwards. Right? So if it was plus 3, 
we're going to move left and right and it's opposite. So that would mean left three. Okay, this part here is actually going to be da, 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 in the exponent. So if you see those things in the exponent, that means we're going to move left and right and it's going to be opposite. Remember the B value inside of here was also going to be that multiplier. And that means instead of uh, right outside the A value, we did vertical, inside we did horizontal, and it's still going to work backwards the way we think it is. And so the vocab becomes a little bit backwards. All right, so again, if you click over here, we're going to take you through all these. All right, we want to make sure we're using some of our uh, old ideas that we know what in the world we're talking about. And they all start. All right, so we're going to scroll way down here and we'll get rid of everything else here. So one at a time. I added in two to the x power as the red one. All right, so if I do x minus one in the parentheses, notice what happens. We would think that that's left one, but it's actually a right one. Okay, so we notice this first one. The translation is we're going to go right one. Okay, so that is going to change out uh, the y-intercept and the asymptotes can move when we start to do this. So take a look at those. Now, in the second one, we're going to multiply it by three. This is on the outside, just like we had before. So you're thinking about if you had three times the absolute value of x, right? That's a multiply, it's a vertical stretch of three. What we do is slide back over here and take a look at what that means to all the other information. Okay, so we can get, um, whoops. A little touchy between my pen and my fingers here, I'm trying to get this figured out for you. All right, but spend a little time playing with these. So notice what happens is we're going to have that a value is three. All right, so that gives us a y-intercept of three. Moves along with that. Um, moves along with our a value. Forget what I was going to say there. I was just surprised it worked. There we go. Um, uh, asymptotes aren't going to change, domain and range are not going to change, all those things will not change because of the nature of the function itself. All right. So let's go ahead and click on the next one if it's plus three. All right. So this is where we're going to see some changes because we know that plus three means move it up three. Uh, so that means we're going to get close to but not cross over three horizontally. All right. So that's something that's going to change the range as we look at that one. So I'm gonna put this in very general terms up here. All right, this one just means that we wanna go up three, but we just wanna make that connection. That's gonna change the range. And so I'm gonna put range. That means we're gonna go from three, not gonna to touch three to infinity, because that's the part that really, really changes. We also know that that also changes the y-intercept. All right, remember four, this is the one in algebra two, uh, where I was able to, uh, maybe trick some of you, not intentionally, but remember this is actually one half to the x power. So it should look like a um, decay instead of a growth. And why does that happen? So think about what happens if you put a negative inside of here, right? that's gonna give you a y-axis reflection. So let's uh, scroll back over. Try not to move this too fast because it hurts my eyes. So there you go. So we just took it right around the y-axis. So they are uh, reflections of each other. And that's perfectly exactly what we want to see. All right, and the last one, we're going to put three inside of there. But remember what that happens with that, right? If it was three on the outside, we said that was a vertical stretch. And what happens now is it becomes a horizontal compression. Everything in the inside is opposite, right? It's like Mr. Wagner told me this year. He goes, you know, I always tell the kids it's about if it's inside the parentheses, inside the absolute value. In this case, if it's part of the exponent, it's like the fun house. Everything in a fun house is backwards. You look in the mirror and you get this really tall face. You look in another mirror and you get this really wide face. Things are backwards of the way you want it to be. Um, so this is going to be a, right? We think that it's supposed to be a vertical stretch. It's a horizontal compression, HC of three. Uh, notice it doesn't change. Uh, too many other things of what we're trying to do here. It does not change uh, horizontal asymptote here. Uh, it does not change that we're going to go through a value of one. 
All right, zero, one. And it doesn't change my domain range, any of those things. All right, so that's kind of the gist of what we have here. Uh, now, if you're in my class, uh, I have a few more problems for you. We're going to introduce you to the another thing here, the number e. Uh, this is how it's derived. It is um, the natural base, right? And we start talking about logs. All right, logs have a base 10. And then we're going to get into natural logs, and they have a base of e. So we have to start understanding that e is a number. And it is 2.718. It goes on and on and on. So in our brains, if you haven't been introduced to the, the number E yet, that sounds weird. The number E is in our brains is going to work just like pi. It just keeps growing and growing here. And uh, it is named for a man a long time ago, a Swiss, math, Swiss mathematician, Euler. Okay, real good looking guy. You can tell by the way he didn't smile. All right, and what you're going to do is you're going to think basically of either two or three. And that's how you would graph it and translate all those. So we did everything up here we did based on two because I want you to have the same idea. So when you look at these translations, if I multiply it by two, right, remember this is just a number. So as I change that around, what's that going to be? Well, in front it would be a vertical stretch. So it must be a horizontal compression of two and identify what would happen to it. Okay, so we're going to treat it just like that. Right? So outside, you know, this is your vertical stretch of three. So you get some of those ideas. Um, and then I want you to just kind of use that. Uh, use another Desmos if you want to. Play around with those. Make sure you identify right, what's going to move it up, what's going to move it down. Right? And we are working on, right, if I had two to the x power, so what happens if I end up with four to the x power? How did that happen? Right? What kind of translations do I have to do? Same thing with five to the x power. How can I write those equations? Where do I have to put uh, minus three to get down three units? So give those a try. We'll do it again here with uh, x to e to the x power, and then a couple homework problems on the end if you're ready for them. If not, we'll clean it up during class. And it's been my pleasure. Hopefully everything works on your page as well, and uh, and you get some good stuff out of it. Thanks, Euler. You're the best.